all my children. It would have meant a ten million dollar loss to this company. The battle for power begins. Don't forget who you're talking to, Mr. Jacoby. Oh, well, I am sorry, Madam President. And on the edge of the night. You're a very beautiful woman, Mallory. You don't like it when I say things like that to you. Sky attempts to make up for lost time, while Raven plans to regain her lost fortune. All my children, the edge of night. Weekdays. He's undercover to smash an illegal fireworks ring and rescue Danny when Code Red returns. Then a brave. You're watching USA, America's all entertainment network. It's not going to do you any good to starve yourself, you know. It isn't a bad sandwich. It's a lot better than the one you would have gotten on the airplane. Suit yourself. How is she? I think she's on a hunger strike. Jody, this is a peace offering. What's wrong? I want to get out of here. I am a person, not a symbol. I have feelings and a family that is worrying about me right now. Don't you think we know that? We have a family, too, trapped in that damn gangster's paradise that used to be our country. And do you expect me to feel sorry for them? When you won't even feel sorry for the family that I have right here? You can get in touch with them as soon as it's safe. Well, what do you mean? Send them a picture postcard from the Republic of Eden? I don't care. It's wrong to think I do care about these, these gangsters you keep talking about when you are acting exactly like gangsters yourselves. I know that thought has occurred to me. Look, if I could... If I could just get in touch with them, you know, let them know that I'm, I'm all right. I'm afraid that's not possible, Perhaps Jody. Perhaps it is. What? We can't be so cruel. We can't risk that, Pietro. Oh, please, please do it. I swear to you, I won't do anything that'll give you away. If, if, if you'll just let them know that I'm alive, that I'm all right. Viva, it's my fault that things have gone so badly. First, my clumsy attempted abduction of Jody, and then the bad luck of having Endicott show up on the same flight to Eden. It's not your fault that he is, was on the plane. He hasn't been home in years. Well, wait, would somebody please tell me, what does Mr. Endicott have to do with all of this? Your friend Endicott. <laughs> you think Mr. Endicott's just a nice cultured gentleman, don't you? I don't know anything. He was interested in the portrait. He offered to sell it at a very good price. That portrait is priceless. He was interested in it because he didn't want you to know. Do you mean Endicott is involved in all of this? Endicott is theirs. He is a front man in the gangster government. Your accountant must use sunglasses when he does these books. All I see here is red ink. Well, it's your gallery now, Mr. Larimer. You can do whatever you want with it. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this garbage on the walls I and try to turn it pardon. into cash. If you don't like my taste, I'm sorry. You can have my resignation as soon as you want it. That's nice to know. Joe, don't you ever smile. I just heard some bad news. What? About my father? Hey, what's going on here today? This one here walks around wanting to resign. You got bad news. Give me a break today. What's happening? About the girl. Oh. Jody Travis. Who is Jody Travis? You don't know her. <sighs> what about her? She's missing. She's been missing since last night, 6 o'clock. I think it might be a kidnapping. because Raven might not want visitors. Geraldine told us to go right up. But if she's not feeling well, she... Well, all she has to do is say so, and we'll leave. Yeah, what do you want? It's uh, Mike and Nancy. Geraldine said you were expecting us. Oh, yeah. Right on. Can you give me a minute? I'm just going to put on a robe. Of course, Raven. Hi. Hello, Raven. Hello, Raven. I, I know that you said it was all right to come over this evening, but if you're not feeling well, we can... No, no, it's all right. Sit down. Um, I wasn't feeling well enough to go downstairs, but I really am glad to see you. Oh, we're glad to see you, too. 
Geraldine informed us that you had uh, still another shock. So she told you about Gunther, did she? Yes, she told us. Yes, sir. We can understand why you don't feel well. I don't think I will ever really feel well again. Yes, you will. Don't worry. You're very resilient, Raven. Raven, we realize what an upheaval this has been for you. But there is a positive side. You uh, may not walk out of this house with much, but there won't be any criminal charges against you, so you still have your freedom, and there's nothing more valuable than that. Uh, Raven, I maybe we should leave you to rest. You know, I really am tired. I think I'd just like to go to bed. Yeah, we, we just wanted to let you know that you could count on us if there's any way we can help you. Thank you. It's so nice just to know you have friends. Okay, Thanks. well, we can see ourselves. Okay. Now, you get a good rest. Okay, I will. Good night, Raven. Good night. Well, my man Spencer tells me that you're going to cooperate in the transfer of my property. I had no choice, apparently. Well, I just wanted to tell you that as long as you do continue to cooperate, and you don't offer any interference to my resuming control over what does belong to me, I'm willing to forego criminal charges against you. How nice and chivalrous. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to know that uh, as long as you are out of my house and my life as soon as possible. I have already made arrangements to go. Good. Now, the next order of business is my attorneys and my accountants would like to have a complete picture of your finances. I know it's an unpleasant business, but it's necessary, as I'm sure you can appreciate. We need to know what personal wealth you brought to your marriage so that uh, there won't be any confusion when the transfer takes place. I'd hate to be responsible for you losing any of your own personal wealth. Well, I had been living on a trust fund that my daddy gave me. It barely paid for my toenail polish. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I wouldn't like you to know that the rule of this transfer is going to be what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine. Where is he? Spencer, I need to know where he is. Look, uh, it's an important matter concerning the estate. It, it's very, very important. And, uh, well, that's where the trail stopped, was right there at the Saracen Head bookstore. That's not good enough. It's just not good enough. What did the old man have to say? Well, he told us the same thing he basically told Nelson, that um, there might have been a young lady there who answered Jody's description, and if she was, she might have talked to some woman who might have been middle-aged. Oh, she might have, she might have. Too many might haves. Come on, it's a small store. I know I've been in there myself. Why can't that old guy be more positive? Well, I asked the same question, but he told me he had problems with his eyesight. Awful convenience sometimes, problem with your eyesight, problems of hearing. Well, look, Chief, we haven't completely overruled the possibility of collusion, but that old guy in that bookstore have been there so long, it's just not likely that he woke up one morning and decided to switch professions. Yeah, unless he found a book on kidnapping. Listen, wasn't there somebody else might have seen her? No, he said that uh, there weren't any customers in the store. All right, then what do you think? I mean, what's your gut feeling on this? Well, we can't avoid the obvious. I mean, it's possible that that uh, mysterious middle-aged lady could have sent that note. I mean, she was there at 6 o'clock when she was supposed to be, and presumably she did talk to Jody, and they left together. Maybe she took her somewhere. Where and why? Now, I uh, don't have an answer for that one yet. Yeah, who is it? Come on in. Is it okay, Chief? Yeah. You know Calvin Stone? Yeah, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Calvin and I met a couple weeks ago. Detective Damien Tyler. I guess I was still under suspension when you were hired. Uh -huh. Ted Loomis. Everything uh, okay now, Tyler? Oh, everything's just fine, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Loomis, the chief tells us you want a piece of this missing persons action. Uh, well, I did hear the word kidnapping being tossed around in the TCR, yeah. Uh, look, that's just guesswork right now. There's been no ransom note, no contact at all. Have you got some uh, special expertise in the field? Uh, I was with the SWAT team in my last assignment. Before that, I uh, did some work in the Rutledge kidnapping in Springfield. We, um... You got the guy, if you remember. Yeah, I understand you lost the victim. Yeah. Sometimes that goes with the territory. All right, now listen. Nobody's calling this a kidnapping or anything yet. Do we get more information? So I'm, I'm glad you're with us. Yeah, that makes two of us. The uh, young lady happens to be a personal friend. 
Ah, well, in that case, I'll uh, do everything I can. What kind of an insane world is this? I just don't understand it. Who would want to hurt her? We don't have any reason to believe she's been hurt. I know, but she's not home now, and we still don't know the reason why. Kind of run out of theories myself. You know, if she had been kidnapped, if it was for money, there would have been some kind of a call. Hello? Is this the Kavanaugh residence? Yes, yes, it is. I have a message from Jody. All right, do what the police told you to. Come on. Hold on one moment, please. Nicole, is that you? Hello? Give me the phone. Hello. Uh, yes, hello. I'm sorry, but the Kavanaugh's aren't in right now. They'll be back in 20 minutes. Call back then. Oh, that was so horrible. Oh, I wanted to talk to her so badly. I know your father was having a little grief about this, this Jody chick or whatever, but he never told me why. Well, I don't know if I should tell you why. The fewer people who know about her, the better. What you mean is the less she knows, the better. Hey, what the hell are you talking about? What's going on? You guys talking in code or what? Now, look, I'm the boss of this operation, and I want to know what's going on. Tell him. Tell him! All right, I'll tell him. Then maybe he'll realize just how serious it is and why my father had to resort to every possibility to save the situation. Yeah, like knocking off old ladies. You know, when he tells those people in Eden why he did those things, they'll agree with him, and then we're going to see who's the boss here. All right, come on, come on. I want to hear about this Jody Trapp. All right. She is a descendant of the royal family of Eden. Royal family. Now, what is that? That's, uh, that's kings and queens. Mm -hmm. The only kings and queens people worry about are in a deck of cards at a blackjack table. Oh. The people in Eden might still care. She's a direct descendant of a woman called Marie Bonaventure, who is also known as the Martyr of Eden. Martyr? What is that? That's, uh, that's like a saint or something, right? Closest thing to it. Marie Bonaventure died defending the old royal palace of Eden in a revolution about 150 years ago, single-handedly. And that's made her, naturally, a national heroine. So what has that got to do with this Jody Travis chick? There's a prophecy, Eddie. What? A prophecy? He doesn't even know what pro What's a prophecy? Talk English. I, every school child in Eden knows that there's a prediction that one day Marie Bonaventure will return to save the country when they most need her. You're talking like a, a fairy tale. I mean, a, a kid's rhyme or something, right? But that's nonsense. Who believes Obviously, that stuff? Obviously, you don't understand that this prediction and legend are taken very seriously, especially now. Don't you get it? They're over there waiting for the martyr to come and save them from guys like you. Me? Me? What have I got to do with it? Mr. Farmer, you must know that there's a, a resistance movement underfoot. A group of people who are trying to overthrow the present government because of their trade affiliations with small private industries in America. Is that what we're called now? Small private industries? <laughs> this is not a joke. My father and I have been watching Leonie Travis, Jody Travis's mother, for years. She knew the truth about herself. But she didn't want to be a martyr, and she just wanted to ignore her heritage. So much so that she didn't even tell her own daughter about it. She's dead now. Oh, that's good. No problem. But the daughter could be, you understand? If she knew the truth. Now, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. That, that portrait that your father had my guy Vince grab, that portrait was... Was a portrait of the martyr herself. We didn't even know Leonie Travis had it. Now, if her daughter had traced its origins, she would have known the truth. And she might have revealed it to somebody and encouraged the resistance to use her to fulfill that prophecy. That is one hell of a story. And now you're telling me that this chick is missing. That's the latest report. Huh. Hey, but how do they know she didn't take off with some guy? Maybe she's partying in some way. Oh! The cops think maybe somebody kidnapped her. The question is, who? But now the cops have a handle on this thing, right? They're that's, on top. Yeah, that's what they say. All right. Don't worry about nothing. I think I got a way to solve this, uh, this little mess. Please. Please, you will let me call back, won't you? Look, you said they'd be back in 20 minutes. I must speak to my sister. I just want her to hear my voice to know that I'm all right. All right. 
You can speak with your sister. But don't tell her where you are or we'll have to hurt you. You still feel a great deal of resentment towards me, don't you? I can sense the hostility. How hostile can I be? I'm here. Well, I tend to think that uh, that was curiosity. I mean, I did promise to tell you the story of what happened in Switzerland. Skylar, I just want to make sure that you understand that no matter what happened in Switzerland, I had nothing to do with Jeff Brown stealing your identity. I know, I know. That was all Libby Webster's fantasy. A fantasy you were ready to believe. I was paranoid. The whole world was against me, so why shouldn't you be? You know, I realize now how awful that must have been for you. And I'm sure that Libby made a very good case against me. I mean, I did spend that summer with the man that I knew as Jim Dieters. Who was really Jeff Brown. Well, at least he had a nice summer. Oh, I don't think so. All those operations. His face was in bandages the entire time. Yeah, I know, but he was looking at your face. That must have made up for it. You don't like it when I say things like that, do you? Well, how am I supposed to react? You're a very beautiful woman, Valerie. Very sensitive. Although I imagine most of the men in Monticello must have told you that by now, haven't they? You were going to tell me about Switzerland. Oh, oh, what a surprise! Raven. Valerie, darling! And Mr. Whitney. That, that's right, I forgot you two knew each other. Yes, that's right, we know each other. Well, isn't that nice? Oh, I suppose you're telling her the whole incredible story. No, actually, he hasn't been. We just got here and we haven't had a chance to talk yet. Oh, well, it's unbelievable. I mean, I can't believe I was taken in by my own husband. Really? Yes. Of course, uh, who wouldn't be taken in by such a devastatingly handsome face? It wasn't easy, Derek. Believe me, when, when Nicole heard Jody's voice, she was desperate to, to talk to her to make sure she was all right. Well, listen, Miles, she did the right thing. Take my word for it. The only way to handle this thing is to make them call you back. That way we can trace the call. If they call back, we don't have any guarantee of that. You've got to take a chance on something. If it's a kidnapping, they have to call back. They've got to make a demand for a ransom. Oh, God, I, I don't even want to think about that right well, now. Listen, don't think about that. What you should do is hang up and stay off the phone. When they call you back, we'll know about it and we'll trace the call. All right. Goodbye. Does Derek really think this is going to work? He's hopeful. Look, when they call, either Jody or the people, we got to keep them on the line as long as possible. Okay. You've got to answer the phone. They say they talk to women more often, longer than they do. Hello? Mrs. Kavanaugh? Yes, yes, this is she. I'm calling to tell you that your sister is all right. She's in good health, she's in no danger, and she's with friends. Well, um, if you really are a friend, would it be all right if I spoke with her? Very well, but just for one minute. Nicole? Oh, Jody, honey, are you really all right? Can I believe that it's true? Yes, I'm fine. Honey, are they listening to this conversation? Yes. Is it? What do they want? Do, do they want money? Do they want ransom? No, no, I don't think so. Well, what is it then? Um, listen, whoever you are, I don't know what it is you think you're doing, but believe me, Jody does not belong to a wealthy family. The penthouse that we live in belongs to my husband's sister, and she is abroad. All right, no, give me the... No, just one more moment. Nicole, I just wanted to tell you not to worry that I'm all right, and um, I don't think I'll be seeing you for a while. Listen, would you do me a favor and please call Gavin? Tell him I'm all right and tell him that I love him. Honey, we love you too. Oh, they hung up. Oh, do you think they had enough time to trace it? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. 
That call came from the Saracen Head bookshop where this whole thing started. You mean she was right in that place the whole time? Yeah, Damn. about that? Maybe she was in a back room or something. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? Get out there. I'll have a patrol car watch the place right. in the meantime. you coming? No, I'll uh, take my own car and uh, see you there. i got to check in with the district supervisor. Right. Mr. Lorimer, please. One second. Are you Eddie? Yeah, what is it? Eddie, I found the girl. Ah, we can sleep good tonight. Your little boys in blue did a terrific job. Very good, baby. She's, uh, she's being held by some guy. It's probably a ransom job. They're moving in on her right now. All right, look, you're gonna go, uh, you're gonna go with them on the bus, right? Sure, why not? All right, good. Now, uh, you know how I hate crooks and bad guys, right? So I don't want you to show no mercy. You, uh, you take no prisoners. In fact, I don't want you to feel bad if uh, the girl should get hit. You know what? I'll tell you what you do. You make absolutely sure the girl gets hit. Thanks, Dee Dee. I'm Dave. And I'm David. It's time for another Gay Night at the Movies. And tonight, Dave and I saw Longtime Companion, which is currently playing at theaters in San Francisco, San Jose, and Burlingame. And now I guess he'll tell us what the movie was about. All right. <clears throat> now, this movie basically chronicles the AIDS epidemic from 1981 through to the present. And it's set in and around New York City, New York City, and Fire Island, as you might imagine. And it follows the progress of the epidemic by 